Welcome back to my channel, my friends. Okay, so I often get a lot of emails, but recently I've been getting tons of emails about one thing, and it's TikTok. If you guys don't know about TikTok, it's a new social media platform. You basically be creative with music. I don't know, it's not really my jam, but it's there and loads of people are on it. And judging by the emails that I'm getting, there seems to be a lot of people that's worried about what's going on. So we're gonna look at what's trending in terms of food on TikTok. I mean, there's a lot of eyes on TikTok. There's a lot of young eyes on TikTok. I'm not really one to make drama videos or reaction videos, that's just, it's just not me. I don't wanna create drama. But having said that, if there's misinformation out there, I think it would be wrong of me and irresponsible of me not to make some content to kind of spread the news. It's actually why I started my channel in the first place because I felt like there was a lot of misinformation when I was young and I was misled. This isn't me like calling any of the creators out in particular, like everyone gets misled. I think it's just important to look out for each other and bad things can happen sometimes because people that know better and could have helped like they don't say anything they don't speak up and so that's kind of why i want to look through this viral content on tiktok together to see whether the content that's being put out to thousands millions of young people actually matches up with the science. I spent literally a week trying to log back into my TikTok to do this video because I forget my passwords. I forget what email addresses they're linked to. It was messy, okay? So now I'm logged in, hopefully it hasn't logged me out because I think I will genuinely cry. It didn't log me out. The first thing I wanted to talk about was what I eat in a days. There's a lot of what I eat in a days on TikTok. It's basically just a bit like the what I eat in a days that you see on YouTube, just condensed into 15 seconds, add a little bit of copyright music, because you can do that on TikTok. Actually, that is one of the advantages of TikTok. So let's take a look at some of the most popular what I eat in a days. Okay, so this what I eat in a day has 6.6 .6 million views, which is probably more than all of my what I eat in a days combined, and I've made a lot on my channel, and 1.4 million likes, just so many likes. Okay, so for breakfast, she had an apple, then for lunch, she had like three eggs, then for dinner, she had like a little bowl of minced meat with some black beans and, you know, like a salt bay of cheese, and then she had some popcorn. She finished off her day with popcorn. Now, all in all, that's probably not more than like 1,200 calories, judging by like the portion sizes and just generally like what she was eating. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe she's trying to put herself into a deficit. So I looked through the comments and she actually says like, this is not me trying to lose weight. So that's not her trying to create a deficit. So you guys know me, you guys know that I love my food, but you also know that I really advocate not under eating because of the effects it has on your metabolism. So I think she's just not eating enough. I think 1,200 calories is very, very low. The amazing thing when looking through this comment section and actually even the emails that I receive is, a lot of people are aware that that's probably her under eating and there's a lot of people saying and being supportive saying that she should be eating more or she should try adding more food to her diet and even though there are a lot of people that are trying to look out for her there's just as many people saying that they should be eating the same or that they should be eating even less if they want to try and lose weight or that they're going to try it and this is kind of what all my emails are about like this is what is being put out in the for you page and so for me this isn't a great start to the kind of content about food on tiktok but let's just keep going let's move on so the next what i eat in a day has 5.5 million views for a what i eat in a day that's nuts views she says that she's down 70 pounds and this is what she eats in a day. So she starts off with black coffee, then she goes on to a green shot kind of thing. Then she has like an Arbon protein shake. She follows that up with her apple snack, apples galore on TikTok. Then she has a burrito. Then she has hummus, carrots and celery. Then she has some like snacker jack kind of rice cake small snacks and then for dinner she has like a pork chop literally like one potato just cut up and some green beans and then she ends the day with like a detox tea so it feels like she's eating a lot more because there's a lot more like meal times but actually if we look at the calories that she's taking in the actual food intake it's still very 
small, like she is literally eating less than 1,400 calories. So I didn't actually know what a lot of these things were. I didn't know what Arbon was. I didn't know what that Amy's burrito thing was. I love burritos though. Thinking of burritos, there's a really good burrito place right next to where we live. And I go there every lunchtime. I go there, I try and pack as many ingredients as possible in there. And the guy that's making it is always like, it's not gonna fit. And I'm like, yes it is. I believe in you. Anyway, so I did some research to find out these products and when I added up everything that she ate in terms of calories, it just doesn't add up to more than 1,400 calories. Like it's probably in that 1,300 to 1,400 calorie range. Very, very few calories. And then she's having a detox tea, which again is probably just gonna make her shit it all out anyway. So I would say that is again under eating. And when you look at the comments, again, a lot of people saying that she should be eating a little bit more. A lot of people against the Arbon protein shake. I'm guessing they don't have a great rep. Also, if you look at the top comment, it says, I do the same thing, except about 9 p.m. I have a sleeve of Oreos, two bowls of fruity pebbles, and half a bag of salt and vinegar chips. And then she replies saying, I have days like those, not even gonna pretend that I don't. I've been lucky, I meet thousands of girls and I speak with and partner with registered dietitians that specialize in like under fueling. And this is a really big sign and like a red flag that experts look for. If people are getting cravings all the time and they feel like they need to binge on energy dense food, that's probably a sign that you're not fueling your body enough. And the thing is, I get that she's kind of joking, but I think it's really important to just be aware that cravings, like constant cravings, is probably a sign that you're under fueling and you're just not eating enough food day to day. Okay, so the caption on this one is, TikTok reminds me not to eat. Half of the page is Emily Ratajkowski. I don't even know how to pronounce her name. And then it's her walking into the shop, going to grab a biscuit, looks over at Emily Ratajkowski, and thinks, no, I'm gonna leave the biscuit. This one is like kind of a joke, kind of not a joke. Like I'm just, I'm not sure. If I look through the comments, people genuinely use TikTok as a way like not to eat or to find someone that they really look up to as a reason not to eat. And someone even says, it reminds me to work out. Or it's like, same, but I always cave in. Same, I feel so bad about myself. Oh my God, mood. Everyone in the comment section that was like, eat the cookie, you don't need to compare yourself, be confident eating the cookie, girl. All of that, amazing. I want cookies. Actually, I've got cookie dough. This is some of the cookie dough that I froze from that matcha white chocolate and macadamia nut cookie batch that I made. It's good, isn't it? Wow, I can have a bit more. That's really good frozen. When you have viral trending videos of what eight in a day is like we've just seen, that can create real guilt around food. Like that starts to shape your idea of how you should be eating. I'd almost expect people to start feeling uncomfortable around food. That's kind of how you would feel if that's the kind of content that you saw. So I've spent maybe half an hour going through all of these posts. I'm sure there's way more. Like I'm sure there are some I haven't even seen that have like 20 million views. I don't know. I'm just sure that this is not like all there is. But already we can see that there's a lot of stuff going against the science that we know about health and nutrition. Under eating shouldn't be taken lightly. I genuinely mean that, like it's damaging to the body in so many ways. Like there's a lot of rigorous scientific research that shows the effects of under eating over a long period of time. I think people can sometimes think of food as its only function being like, it determining your weight or how much fat you store in your body. But food is literally our fuel. Like the research shows that if we under eat, we are at risk of losing our periods. We lose our periods, then it impacts our bone health, which then puts us at risk of osteoporosis. There's also metabolic damage. You might think you're losing weight, but actually you're just decreasing your metabolism. Also, it can lower your immune system, so you might get sick more often. It impacts our digestion. Like, I think a lot of people think that they have bloating and IBS or digestive issues 
because they're eating something or they're intolerant to something, a lot of the time, if you're under eating, you will have digestive issues because your digestive system isn't receiving enough energy. When we're under eating, our body protects the most vital organs and processes to keep us alive in that moment. Digestion is kind of like a side thing. It's nice, it's really nice to be able to digest, but proper digestion, where it extracts the nutrients, it uses the enzymes to properly digest the food, that takes energy. Also, the research has shown really strong links between under eating and fatigue and anxiety from a lack of energy. And research also shows that under eating can impact growth and development. And I know that here we're all mentioning like health effects, but even when it comes to losing fat, there's so much research that shows that even if you restrictive eat, it doesn't cause sustained weight loss. That's what my science explained why diets fail video is so important because in there we look at so much good science where the methodology is done properly. So it's not even just that under eating is gonna affect your health, which a lot of science shows that it does, but also the research is starting to show that this type of under eating isn't even effective for sustained fat loss. I guess what I'm trying to say is this content isn't helpful whoever you are. Like if you're already under eating, then this just reaffirms all of your beliefs that under eating is the way to go. And then if you're eating healthily and balanced and inclusive, like doctors and registered dietitians recommend, but then you're seeing super popular posts where people are under eating and then you start to question how you're eating and then, but then if you're someone that struggles to find the motivation to just do small things to make your life a little bit healthier, do you just look at this content and think, oh, like I have to be obsessive and all in to even be healthy in the first place. I'm just not even gonna try. And so there could be a lot of people, and actually I know a lot of people that don't even try healthy eating because this is what they think it looks like. Okay, so next we're gonna look at something a little bit different. It's more like wives' tales, rumors, companies selling you stuff that just has no FDA approval, whatever. So, so I know what I wanna start with with this one. Um, it is the Ray metabolism drops. Now this got into the news because it went so viral, young teenage girls were buying so many of them that the company decided to recall them and take them off the shelves because they were basically just trying to avoid a lawsuit, let's be honest. So basically there were these Ray metabolism drops which supposedly increase your metabolism. Someone on TikTok tried them, that post went viral, and then lots of people started getting involved, sharing that they'd bought these Ray metabolism drops and that they were gonna share their journey of taking them for weight loss. There was just a whole wave of people trying to document their journey of them taking the Ray metabolism drops. So the drops are basically like ketones, taurine, and caffeine. You guys will know how I feel about the ketone stuff. I've already done a Science Explained video about it. All the buzz around this was that it was gonna speed up your metabolism, accelerate weight loss, give you a boost of energy, all of these things that we just love to hear. And I feel like anyone who really understands about human biology will know that it's probably not gonna do that much. Let's be honest. I've checked out the website for these guys and they say that they create evidence-based nutritional blends. Great, show me the evidence. I wanna see it, you know? You say you got some evidence, I need to see that evidence. Surely enough, there is no evidence, there are no papers on there, there's no research papers, there's no journals. When I make a video about something scientific, I will always quote and I will always show the papers where I got my information from. I can't just come up with something and then just say it's research based. Cause that's just bullshit. That's bullshit based. Just think about it. Like if they actually did have evidence to back their products up, that would be the homepage. They should be throwing it in my face because then I would buy it. You know, more people would be like, oh well, obviously they've even got the papers on there it must be true but just like everything these things happen in cycles just like ray metabolism drops have been taken off the shelves something else comes along i just saw a video with 1.8 million views for this like slim kit which is basically kind of just the same thing um and again like just as viral as the last one and i'm sure will probably be recalled very soon who knows if it hasn't already she's actually referencing that the ray drops have gone and that this is the next best thing. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but it does make me sad because these are just kids, like kids are buying this stuff. Okay, so here we've got another one. This one's coming from a doctor 
a doctor of pharmacy, which isn't the same as an actual medical doctor. I think that's something that people get very confused with. I used to get confused with it. I had a head teacher that was like a doctor of, I think it was doctor of biology, but I was like, why have we got a doctor, like a medical doctor as a head teacher? It didn't make sense to me. It's only once I realized that it was an entirely different qualification that I was like, ah. Oh. Okay, so she's basically mixing some lemon with some apple cider vinegar and some cayenne pepper, sounds really spicy and also very acidic, um, with some water and saying hand over the fast metabolism and recipe for a faster metabolism. And she's got 2.6 million views on this with 267,000 likes. A lot of people have seen this. Again, like where is the scientific literature? I've studied this area, I've looked at multiple like peer-reviewed articles and I work with some of the world's best experts in dietetics and there's no science behind it. You can't just have like an idea of oh this product will make me lose fat or will help improve my metabolism. No like it doesn't work like that so in the case of metabolism I'm gonna have to see some really good peer-reviewed research to be convinced that that actually speeds your metabolism. And let me just say like if there is really convincing research then this could change the state of health for so many countries like metabolic syndrome affects millions of people around the world it puts a huge strain on health services and this could be worth billions of pounds so if this did really work this would be all over the news not just on tiktok next we've got to lose 10 pounds in a week with what looks like some fruit and vegetables. This one has got 5.6 million views and 800,000 likes. She's basically just blending in some like lemons with cucumber and pineapple and like a stick of ginger and some water. And that's it. So I was like, is that literally all she's eating? And then losing 10 pounds. That just got me really confused. So I looked in the comment section and thank God, like she was saying, no, just drink this and then also eat like your normal meals which I mean thank god but also like this doesn't do anything to your metabolism sure it's going to hydrate you just like water would but there's no science that shows that any of these things drinking lemon and water and cucumber or whatever whether it's in the morning or before breakfast or before bed does anything to improve anything around like metabolism or fat loss. I mean, to be fair to TikTok, this isn't just a TikTok thing. Like I see this everywhere. I see this from celebrities. I see this in magazines. I see this on all social media platforms. Like this isn't new. These are just gimmicks. They just get packaged really nicely with really nice branding by really popular people. There's still no research to show that this does anything. I guess the good thing is that this isn't gonna be bad for you. Like it's good to have fruit and vegetables. It's packed with micronutrients, but no one's losing 10 pounds in a week with this. So next I wanna look at the general content around food on TikTok. So not so much what I eat in a day is not really like home remedies, just, general content around food. So this one's got 4.2 million views, like 800,000 likes. It's pretty big. It went pretty viral for him. So let's have a look at it. Also, I really like his jumper. Diet hack. I heard people talk about, I do not support. He's not really making a joke, but he's kind of highlighting something like a diet hack that he's heard people talk about. People are saying that they lose a load of weight just by getting sick. I think where this gets really worrying is mostly in the comment section. I went through some trauma and lost my appetite and dropped nine pounds. Not saying it's healthy, but like, thanks trauma. Someone here said, I just want to rent a tapeworm for a little bit. And it has 1,256 likes. People are literally saying like, get sick to lose weight. Like that is not a healthy way to look at weight loss. And the thing is like, I get the people joke. I joke, I love a good joke. In fact, I'm quite like, I'm quite dark when it comes to humor. Sometimes I don't share that on social media. Cause I love a good joke. And I think you should like mess around. I think the general vibe of the comment section isn't really taking this post as a joke. So when you're young and you see this, you're probably gonna get ideas. Okay, so the next one has 5.1 million views, 931,000 likes and 11K comments. She also says dieting is actually so hard, like for real, how do people do this? With a laughing like emoji. I wanna lose weight. 
but I just love curly fries so much. So I know in like five minutes I'm gonna eat curly fries and be happy for about two minutes and then be sad for the next five days about eating it. So she's basically saying like she's gonna eat some curly fries but she knows she's gonna feel guilty afterwards. She has like a hashtag lol and she also has like an emoji that's like lol. So it's kind of hard to tell if it's a joke, especially because those look like genuine tears in her eyes. Maybe she's just a really good actress. But also like the comments don't take it as a joke. Like a lot of people are like, oh my God, same. This is so relatable. Or like, I feel you. I felt that so hard. Dude, that was me. Same, ha ha ha. Like a lot of people are agreeing with the fact that they're gonna feel guilty once they eat curly fries. And again, like, I don't know this girl. I haven't, this is the first post I've seen of hers. She might be completely different. It's probably unfair. It's when I look at the comment section that I think I know where the emails that I'm getting are coming from. I can see this culture where people have discomfort around food. Like, they feel uncomfortable if they eat curly fries or something that they consider bad food or not nutritional food that they're gonna feel guilty. I don't feel guilty if I've had curly fries. I think, damn. And when you're not someone that feels guilty around food, do you then look at this post and think, oh, well, maybe I should feel guilty. And if you do feel guilty around food, it just reaffirms the belief that I should feel guilty around food. When really that should be something that you realize isn't good for you and that you can start to try and work on. And I think that ties into a few things that I wanna say about TikTok in general. The first thing is that all social media is an echo chamber. We think that what we're seeing is diversity and there is diversity on these platforms, but these platforms show you content that align with the perspective that you already have. That's what the For You page is for. It's for you, it's not for anyone else, it's for you. We're not actually being fed any of that diversity. We're only being fed what we like. If you're young or you have like a younger brother or a younger sister or a cousin, when you're young, that's when you're forming all of your ideas and opinions about the world and your opinions on what's normal. Whatever young people are seeing right now, that's what they're growing up with. So I think it's important that they see diversity. If I was in control of TikTok, I know what I would do straight away. I would partner with registered dietitians. I would partner with people who are qualified at the highest level of nutrition to reach out to content creators who are putting out this kind of content to help them and also to limit the exposure of that content. The content that we've been watching, it shouldn't be on five, six, seven million views it shouldn't reach that wider audience. It's all right to have that opinion, but not everyone should hear it because that is misinformation. It's misleading people. And it's on such an important topic, which is your health. Since that seems highly unlikely, like who knows what, where, what, TikTok, musically, I don't even know, is that scenario probably won't happen. We need to take it into our own hands. No one's gonna do it for us. If something doesn't seem right, speak up. If you can see that someone is under eating, under fueling themselves, they feel feelings like guilt, they're not comfortable around food, then speak up, but do it from a place of love and support. Everyone gets lost now and then. It's not a simple topic. Human biology isn't a simple topic. And we've been fed like misinformation for years, decades from diet companies. Like it's so natural to feel confused when it comes to eating right and making the right choices for our health. But I think what we can do is point people in the right direction. So point them to medical doctors, point them to registered dietitians. Let's start looking out for each other. Let's show support in the comment section. And that is already gonna make a huge change. Let's just start following and subscribing to registered dietitians, medical doctors, people who are really qualified and people who publicly share all of the research that they base their opinions on, like Dr. Mike. I saw there was someone on TikTok as well. Her name is Sarah Grace Meck. That's amazing. There are people out there that we can follow that have all that information and they want to share that information. I mean, Dr. Mike has like five mil subs, which actually is amazing because I think as social media is democratized, our influences are a reflection of us. So where whoever we make big is a reflection of who we want to see. So the fact that Dr. Mike is so popular is actually a really amazing thing and I'm really, really happy for him. And I'm really happy for us because we get to get that information. Go find those people who are qualified. They're out there. They're trying to get a voice. They want to be heard and they should be heard. And so we just have to go and look for them and follow them. 
That's what I think we should do. Speak up if you see anything that doesn't seem right and follow the right people when it comes to technical topics. And I honestly think that's one of the biggest challenges I've had as a creator is trying to balance that scientific content with the kind of sexy, flashy, stuff that we're used to that entices people on social media. We're very visual creatures, like we trust people who have abs, it's just like an instinct. But on topics that are technical and complicated and affect your health, none of that makes a difference. Doesn't matter how sexy, how many abs you have, it doesn't make a difference. You either know or you don't know. And you can't see that just by looking at someone and making a quick judgment. So yeah, I just think we should give more people a chance and that's kind of everything I wanted to cover. So if you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos. Hit the little notification bell so that YouTube can actually let you know when I've posted a new video. And I will see you guys very soon. I love ya. Bye.